Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake of RobertoBlake.com geeking out with you today over the new 2015 MacBook Air. So today we got a special preview of the new MacBook Air and what we can expect from it. I'm going to talk to you about that so you know everything that you need to before you decide whether this product is for you or not today. So right off the bat, one of the new things about the MacBook Air for 2015 is going to be that it actually is going to be a retina display. We finally are getting a retina display in the new MacBook Air. It's going to be using an all new Intel chipset. It's going to be using the new Intel M Broadwell mobile chipset. And it's also going to be using uh, an even more improved Intel 5500, I believe, onboard video card. So that's going to give you tremendous graphics on that retina display. I'll go into that in a little bit more detail later in the video. So the big thing they're touting with this new MacBook Air is that it's all about mobility, portability, and wireless. They've made it thinner and lighter than they ever have before. It's got the beautiful 12 inch retina display. It's all about going wireless on this one. So there's not going to be nearly as many ports. They actually added a new port for the charging. It's going to be a USB-C. So it's not going to be the traditional Mac charging port, um, which is a little weird to me. I mean, I feel like getting these custom ports is more of a detriment than anything else because it takes away from some of that universal you know, feel and the ability to combine old accessories with it. So you always have to end up getting the new stuff, new chargers for the new ports, etc. And that bothers me. But on the other hand, they do make the connectivity better. They make the charging faster. So you know, there's some trade-off for the innovation there. So this one's thinner than ever. It's 13.1 millimeters. Who really cares? Uh, it's about two pounds and it's got the 12 inch display and the retina on that is going almost edge to edge. Also on this display, you're getting 3 million pixels. This thing is pretty much uh, the ability to watch 2K video. Not quite 4K, but 2K video on this particular laptop. So that's very cool, in my opinion. They did a whole new design for the uh, full keyboard on this one. The keyboards are designed with what they call the butterfly design, which just means it's more accurate. You don't have to push the center of it. They are backlit keys, so that is cool. The keys are, I think, 17% larger than they were on the previous model. So this is just gonna be a lot more user-friendly for you if you need a full-size keyboard on such a small device. So again, that's really interesting. There's some innovation going on there. I don't think it's a super big deal, but from a usability standpoint and a product design standpoint, that is very clever and it's very good. It's well done. And I'm really curious to see how the execution feels in terms of a different experience. In addition to the new keyboard, there's a new trackpad using what they're calling a uh, force touch. And, um, you know, I can't help but feel there's like a little bit of Star Wars nerd going on in there on the tech team. But again, I'm going to think of it as force push because ideally what's happening here is you can have pressure sensitivity for the push and you can do multi gestures with your fingers and things like that. So I think that's very interesting. I think it's very, uh, very nerd, very wizardly if they will. Um, so I think that's pretty cool. So this, this new feature is one for all of you gearheads out there. This thing's gonna be quieter than ever because it's the first MacBook Air to not have a fan. It's probably the first MacBook to not have a fan. So it is whisper quiet, and I'm not sure the technical reasons on how they were able to accomplish this and pull it off, but it doesn't have a fan. So that's really different, and I'm really curious as to how that's going to affect its ability to, um, in terms of the build quality, to be a long-lasting product. I'm very concerned about that on some level because we know how important cooling is to the um, you know, component's shelf life. So I'm a little worried about that, but I'm assuming that if they went there, they figured something out. The battery life on this new MacBook Air is going to be uh, nine to 10 hours, and that's even watching um, stuff via iTunes. So even if you're watching video, you should be able to get 10 hours out of it. So you get a whole work day essentially. That's not bad. Um, I'm really curious about what the battery life would be for doing something like Photoshop. I'm sure it's probably closer to maybe three, four hours, maybe less. So who knows? Speaking of Photoshop, a lot of you tuning into this channel, you use these kind of computers for your graphic design and your video editing work. Well, due to the new um, Intel M uh, Broadwell on these, the base model of this has a 1.1 gigahertz dual core Intel M processor that can turbo boost to 2.4 gigahertz with four megabytes shared on the L3 cache. And the high-end model of that is 1.2 dual that boosts up to 2.6. 
So looking at that and what they have going on here, and you know, it is configurable to go up to 2.9 apparently. Uh, I guess that's at the very high end. You could actually get away between that and the eight gigabytes of RAM that this comes base with. Uh, you could get away with doing some light video editing in um, Adobe Premiere Pro, and you could get away with some Photoshop if you're not doing more than 10, 20 layers. Um, and you would be okay with this. Now, I don't recommend using it that way, but what it does mean is that if you're on the go with this thing and it's your travel laptop, that if you needed to do your basic work, if you need to get a video up on YouTube, if you need to get some print work done, you need to get some uh, web design done, you could do it very well on this and it wouldn't lag or anything like that. Um, it's using the PCI-based flash storage. The base model comes with uh, 256 on that. It is configurable up to 512. So you do have that. And the Intel graphics card on this is actually the Intel 5300, and it's capable of wireless N, wireless G, and of course, the new Bluetooth 4.0 wireless technology. So that's very cool. And this plays into what they're doing with the Beats headphones to, you know, and the Beats uh, wireless speakers to allow you to be able to use that seamlessly with it. So that's very cool. Um, the ports that it has um, are a 3.1, um, up to five gigahertz per second, USB 3.1, so it has that. It does have the native display port, uh, the VGA out using USB-C, and you do need a VGA multi-port adapter that's sold separately for that, and you do have HDMI video out using the USB-C, digital AV multi-port adapter also sold separately. So like I was saying earlier, now you have to buy all these accessories to be able to do some of the basic things that you've been doing up until now. So if you want to you know, stream this out to an external monitor, you have to buy a whole new set of adapters to be able to do this for the new USB-C. So that's something to look forward to, spending more money. It's got the usual uh, dual speakers and the dual microphones. Um, it does have a FaceTime camera that is good for up to 480p. I really wish that this was at least HD as far as 720, better yet 1080, but we'll take what we can get there. And of course, it is going to be running OS X and it's going to be doing Yosemite and it's going to be releasing with the iLife apps that you're used to, GarageBand, iTunes, etc. One last interesting thing on this, it's gonna come in silver, gold, and space gray, just like the iPhones. So that's very cool. And you can actually match up your iPad, your iPhone, and your new MacBook Air Retina to this in terms of color scheme and having that consistent if that's what you wanna do. So that's very cool from a design standpoint. Now, big question, who is this laptop for? Well, this laptop, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, is not for you know, graphic design and video editing professionals. This is for casual users or for somebody, you know, who does creative things to take as a travel laptop. This is for not power users. This is for the average person who wants a Mac for one reason or another, but feels that the MacBook Pro is overkill for what they're doing. And maybe the only reason they thought about getting one was the retina display. Well, now that's off the table. This is powerful enough to be productive in doing some basic creative things. So maybe this is for a college student who is you know, just starting and is dabbling in graphic design or video editing and not taking it seriously, doing some photography. I think that this would be a great laptop for that person um, if they absolutely want a Mac and they're on a budget. So I think that's what this is for, for the most part. And I would say that you could get away with because it comes with the eight gigabytes of RAM and the Intel M processors that we talked about, you could do a reasonable amount of video editing if you're doing basic YouTube videos like mine. You could do that. You could do a short indie film. I think you could get away with that on this machine and be fine. So that is why I think it is good for, I think if you're just doing photo editing, that it's robust enough to handle that. So if you're a photographer, this might be a good solution for you, especially if you have a camera that has wireless capabilities and you want to sync them up, you can do that. So um, that's who I would recommend this for. Again, not for power users, not for you know heavy graphic design users who want a Mac but have a budget of 1500. If you need to do heavy, intense graphics or video editing on a budget of 1500, you're not gonna be able to go into this Mac. I recommend that you would at least get the MacBook Pro at that pricing, even if it's the entry-level model.
Well, I hope this video answered a lot of your questions about the new MacBook Air for 2015. If you still have questions, I will answer them in the comment section below. I will update the description of this video as more information becomes available and we get closer to a launch. So that's what's going on with this. Uh, if I can manage to get my hands on one and do a more comprehensive review once it's out, I will definitely do that for you guys. Anyway, like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other awesome content on the channel. As always, you guys, thanks so much for watching and geeking out with me today.